Yes, that's right, it's Joe here for Joyrider TV, and it is my absolute pleasure to introduce you to Paddy Butler, host of Totally Immersed TV, and current Hobie 14 world champion, who's gonna be letting us know how he sails his Hobie 14 fast. Over to Paddy. Welcome to Totally Immersed TV, collabing with Joyrider TV for the very first masterclass here today. Before we begin this Hobie 14 Masterclass, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land in which we are filming this video today, the Wandi Wandanian people of the Ewan Nation, here on the south coast of New South Wales, Australia. So, Jervis Bay Vincenny Sailing Club is where we are filming today, and this is the hub of the Hobie 14 action here on the east coast of Australia. I'm here with my trusted vessel, uh, La Cheeky, she is a Hobie 14 hybrid made from French hulls and our front beam, side beams, everything in between, mast is all retro fitted Hobie 14 uh, stock from the heyday back in the 80s. So we're here for a masterclass. We're going to get into the nitty gritty bits probably in a later video. There's plenty of stuff for you to watch here today, but we're just going to do a little bit of a taster. So Joe and I have been chatting. He's heading over to the North American Hobie 14 Championships. Wish him the best of luck for that one. So I'm going to give him a few tips. I'm also going to give all you guys a few tips here and there. And this is for me. This is my boat. The biggest thing about sailing a Hobie 14, it is one of the hardest catamarans to sail. And it takes a lot of time on the water to get yourself to a point where you do feel comfortable. Um, so everything that I'm telling you guys now, this is my setting, this is my boat, and you guys can tweak it and sort of play with it as you will. So a brief rundown of my boat, I've got the stock standard grip on the side beams, silver side beams, silver front beams, silver corner castings. On a Hobie 14 hybrid, we have the integrated back beam, same as a Hobie 16 and the stock standard brand new Hobie 14s. Makes that traveler system a lot nicer. I've got my mast rotation set up at the moment for standard conditions, sort of just getting out on trap, sort of that 10 to 15 knot range, um, 10 to 12 knot range. I've got my two telltales. This is all I run. Um, I have my four stay adjuster for those light wind settings. Generally, in anything more than trapping, I will take this off. Um, so, boat setting at the moment. Let's, uh, let's have a look what we got. So, at the moment, I have got my boat in a standard um, setup. To find out sort of where that rig tension sits, this is what I've got on my boat. So, Rig tension, it's not too tight, it's not too sloppy. It's tight enough to keep the mast solid and rigid. However, it's not tight enough that it stops the rotation of the mast when we are sailing. So a good way to actually check that rig tension itself is to just grab your halyard, where I've got it now. Let's get this solid and tight. We've got it to the front pin and we are going to take it to the back of the rudder that's at the zero that's about 860 so that's 860 mil so that's my standard setting is 860. gonna go into retention now i'll just start cleaning this little mesh mission up uh current merch situation i'm wearing the vincennia sailing club standard bridgie's got the uh 50th hobie Nationals 50th Australian Championships uh, regatta t-shirt on at the moment So Before actually let's go into a little bit of boat setup here. So I've got my uh, Trap My trapeze set up a wee bit different to most boats Generally, we've got it tied up around the front beam around the mast goes down one line now this was a retro hobie 14 turbo setup which my dad mb had yeah, he's got the same length of rope same length of uh line and he basically just ties a bowline here around this hook another bowline around this hook and a shot cord that keeps that tight what that allows me to do if i've tipped over is just grab it up here lean out 
and then it just pulls itself back up. Really effective in the, when it's a bit stronger, you don't really have to um, throw it over the top. Whereas if I've tipped over, which doesn't always happen, <laughs> if it tips over in the sort of mid range stuff, I'd sometimes do have to throw my riding line over the top hull to get a bit more leverage. Um, but essentially is what I teach is that you shouldn't be tipping over in, on a Hobie 14, my weight being about 62 kilos makes it a bit hard to get it up if it's not choppy. Flat water, I struggle to get the boat up most of the time, in the flat water that is. In if, but if it's blowing, say, 18 to 20, um, even in flat water, it'll generally be a bit easier to get up. I've got it rigged up standard at the moment. Light wind. So I've got these two quick release pins. In the conditions where it is on the boat all the time, um, that sort of, you know, two knots, ideally we don't race under two to three knots, but that sort of two to five or six, I'm taking my bottom pin up two holes. So in Italy, would be a best example, in the Hobie 14 Wells in Italy, the majority of the time, I would be sailing this boat with my side stay in this hole on both sides in my shroud in this hole once it's semi um trapezing mind you this is different for everybody i'll be in this hole sorry this hole here so this pin would be out so this for me it is third from the bottom is my stock standard this is going to be different for every boat because every 14 a lot of them have different rig setups a lot of the boats like my um, second Hobie 14, just the behind us here, stock standard old boat with the um, sides, the shrouds on the side beam. It's going to be different. Lengths are going to be different. Third from the bottom. Light wind. It's going to be fifth from the bottom. Semi trapezing. Uh, fourth from the bottom. So I know that now. I've found that rig setting. It took me a long time to find the perfect setting. Mind you, um, and it was a lot of boat on boat um, sailing between, it, you, you'll never find this sailing by yourself, you've got to sail with someone to figure out what works. Um, and that includes mass rotation, rig setting, everything. So if you look at my force day, one thing in Italy, what I did at the Hobie 14 Worlds was I kept my, I kept my force day in the same hole all the time. I never changed this setting. For the master rake so it is I've, I've managed to find this obviously my four stays a little bit shorter and i've just got this perfect shackle that gets me into the top hole of this chain plate and i will never change this whether it's light whether it's extra windy obviously if it's extra windy i can't take it back any further but i will um never change this it's always changing the side stays up two holes if it's really light down two holes to that perfect setting which is what it is in now when it's in this setting at the moment, I won't pull this um, four-stay adjuster on because, you know, I'm not going to get much anyway. You know, that's as much as I'm going to get. That's nothing. So I won't, usually in racing, I will just take this off. However, the light stuff, I'll tie this on when it's those two holes higher and I'll leave it in there. Now, might be a few questions regarding what I'm doing with this with my trap wires. However, most of us Aussies are running this um, setup through the jib eyelets for a turbo setup. So most conditions where you're almost trapping, it is very ergonomics, probably a better word, is it's a lot easier to just reach or to reach, hook, and go. In the light stuff, I will change this shot cord and put it around the side beam which is what i did in italy majority of the time in italy i sailed with the trap hand with the trapeze outside just because it was so light and we're constantly shifting our weight forward and back in the light in the light air especially downwind um, and these will get in the way when they're here so that light stuff out on the side most conditions keeping it through the jib hole here one trick that is a little bit different and a problem especially with new Hobie 14 mainsails. So I'm running with a 5004 fully retrofitted from the 80s, this main, and I love it. It is perfect. We get a lot of our, uh, it's pretty stretched. So that downhaul 
gets pretty flat. Now I'll only pull enough downhaul to get those crinkles out, which they are now. That's all I want to do is get the, in this mid-range stuff to get the crinkles out when it's blowing really crank this down all to the point where it is you know fully fully cranked so mains on we're going the biggest thing about the main trim is make sure you're not overshoot it i found when i got my brand new main um the white with the blue strip where the h was the third panel down um would have seen that hobie 14 worlds i found myself oversheating that main a lot in the light air so a very big trick for me being, you know, 60 ki 62 kilos is, um, well, 63 at the moment, uh, just because I've been loving life, um, is I'm always tra travelled out. I'm never travelled in all the way, ever. Never, ever. Light air, um, very much focused on travelling out. What that allows is, um, actually allows you to get a bit more main sheet tension and close that leech back to the light air allowing the rig to flop over a little bit more those two holes is enough it straightens up the leech where you are traveled out with the top of the main so the main sort of the mast sorry is pulled over a bit because the rig is tight let this mast go slightly up two holes the rig will flop over a little bit more and that leech will be straight up from where you are traveled out so once we are so this is light air you know, I'm, I'm not fully blocked out because I can't, because the man will be oversheeted. Once I'm trapping and getting out on trapeze, I'm not bringing this any in anymore as it is. You know, that's two inches or two cars, one car. Um, once I'm trapping, I can actually sheet this main on block to block and then we're good to go. So I'm never adjusting the trav in any more than where it is now. All I'm doing is actually cranking the main on and going once I'm trapping. What's that? How do you know if you're overshooting? How do you know if you're overshooting? Mm. So, that's a great question from Bridgie behind the camera, is we've got these little things here called telltales. If you're overshooting, I trust everyone knows how to read telltales, so just watch them. I've got leech ribbons on my second from the bottom. Every second, every second baton, I've got a leech ribbon. So it's very much watching your leech ribbons upwind, making sure these are good, and that's it. Watch your telltales, don't oversheat it. And that's the biggest trick. And that, um, having a little bit of trav out is what we run. That helps a lot. Um, light air stuff, you know, I'm, I'm, might have to get you to move back a bit, Bridgie. Like that real light air stuff, I'm sitting all the way up here, you know, like one hand on the, one hand on the, um, on the hull. And then, you know, slowly shifting myself back. It's super light. I might even be sitting in near the mast. Just, and, and, I'm, and my eyes are on the telltales, just steering as high as I can and keeping the boat moving. That's all it is, it's just, and you weight wise, you wanna keep the boat flat. Once it picks up a little bit more, I might shift back a little bit. I might move, you know, out, off, out onto the hull a little bit more and onto the side, um, sidebar. Old boy, MB, he'll be in here for probably two knots more. So once he gets to eight knots, I might be shifting out here. He will have to wait to about 10 knots for him to actually sit on the side. And it's all about the weight. It's you want to keep the boat flat and you want to keep the boat moving. That's the number one thing. And it's just trial and error. It's time on the water for everyone. Find what works. Like I've put hours and hours, myself and um, our current national champion, Bryn Robinson Mills, we put hours into the boat. And that was while we were at uni and when we were studying, you know, we couldn't go to school, I couldn't go to uni, I couldn't teach. So we just go sailing every afternoon and we spent hours out there. And what we found, and mass rotation was a big thing that I found. Bryn was sailing with his mass rotation all the way out. So I'm talking fully rotated, Master rotation pointing down the front beam. He was sailing like that, and that's what I've got now. I've got a preset bowline so that I can just let that go and it can go all the way out. I was sailing with about here, and you know, he was flying away from me. He was sailing higher, he was sailing faster than me. And I'm like, going, this doesn't make sense because I'm on a new boat and he's on his old boat. What's going on here? Um, I went in off the wire, ditched my master rotation, let it out crank my main back on. Um, I was actually able to travel in a lot further. Once my master rotation blew out, 
Um, and then I continued to sail higher and faster than him again. So master rotation on the 14 is a big win and it's just about understanding when, when that is. So light air, you know, you, light air, you want that sort of Hobie 16 setting, which is pointing down to the back corner casting. Um, and then it's just adjusting the boat, feeling the boat and feeling your, you want your main sheeted. You know, you want to be block to block as much as you can. Traveling out allows you to get to block to block. Um, so it's just a matter of, you know, pulling that downhaul on. Adjusting once you're block to block and letting, you know, once you're letting traveler out past the, uh, once you're sailing block to block and you're needing to, you know, travel out past the, the foot strap, that's when you know, okay, I'm going to have to let a bit more mass rotation out here. And it's just about feeling that and understanding the boat. You know, I've sailed countless hours on this boat and on the other boats. So it's to the point where I can adjust. And that's the bottom line is time on the water. Spend more time on the water with your boat, get to know your boat, get to know how it works. And then jumping for, to another boat, for example, me jumping to a brand new Hobie 14 at the Worlds it made, it made things easier. You wanna keep the boat flat, you don't wanna keep too much of the bow in the water. You don't want to, especially you don't want the stern of the boat dragging in the water. And you can hear the sound. You can hear the sound of the stern of the boat in the water dragging. So you just want to keep that boat flat. Um, watch the watch the leeward bow. Watch your leeward stern. And you can see if your boat, if your castings are in the water dragging, especially your windward one, you're way too far back. So shift your weight forward. Um, quick one on downwind. Um, I'll always pop a rudder uh, downwind, always pop a rudder downwind if your rudders are able to be popped. Say we've got an old boat, dodgy cams, um, don't pop a rudder if you don't have to. Um, I've recently just changed my rudder cams because they were absolutely cooked. Uh, it's an Australian term for broken. Um, downwind, dead downwind. On a 14, you're sailing dead downwind. Sail a little bit higher, almost to a 16 line. You're not gaining anything. Um, we've trialed this. I've seen it happen. People sailing higher on a 14 to try go a little bit faster. You don't, you don't gain anything. You want to be sailing dead downwind. But in anything more than, as the same thing with weight. Because I'm lighter, when it gets windier, I need to get back further than, say, my mates who are a bit strong, a um, bit heavier. You know, it's, it's about finding that weight mode. In the lights, in the really light stuff, like I'm talking absolutely dead, I've got my main fully out to the point where it is, and there's photos of this from, uh, from Italy, you know, fully out, standing back, still not fully out. Let's get this main working. It's a bit tangled, hasn't been used for a while. Hence why this video is coming at you guys way later than planned. Um, you know, main fully out, downhaul's off, and you're just holding the main out. We find the boat is steady, it's solid. In that light stuff, obviously I've let the shrouds up, so I've pulled this um, rig tension on here. Just holding the main out and letting it go, making sure. And the biggest thing is, we find everybody doing, make sure your battens are popped. The battens don't pop in the light air, so make sure your battens are popped always. Double check before you stand up, and then just find the setting that works. I like to dig my shoulder in here, weight on the back foot, and then just steer like this. Big thing is, when you're going downwind, you're, you're sometimes looking back, so make sure you are looking forward. This is hence why I sit like this. Same on the other tack. Um, once it's getting a little bit windier, once it's probably, yeah, you know, eight to 10 knots, I will sit up here, front arm um, on the rotation, steering like this. Um, a lot of the boys and the girls sail like this. The foot on, I don't really like it. I hate it. I guess sort neck, just personally, but dad does it, my mate Will does it. They sail like this um, with the foot out in the boom. I tend not to. I feel I've got more steerage when I'm steering like this. Um, if I start feeling my bows digging a little bit more, I'll shift my weight back, put the side, um, tillery central behind the side stay, and I'll just sit like this. So it's just the weight thing. It's purely the weight thing. If you're feeling like you're going to dig those nails in, 
get back. You want to have your weight as far forward as you can downwind all the time, hence why we pull our mast forward. But it's the same thing. Feel the boat, feel the weight, and you do you, basically. Back to the shrouds is that when you buy a boat brand new from the factory, we don't have any boats in Australia at the moment. Um, when you buy a boat brand new from the factory, your shrouds, your forestay, they're going to be different lengths. Your shrouds will need shortening. Your forestay, you'll need to get a new one, a longer one. So, you know, go off that measurement that I had, that's 860. That's what I sail with, being 60 kilos. Someone heavier, Dad MB, he's about, you know, 7580. Rod Waterhouse, he's the same, 7580. They're sailing with their mast and they can sail with their mast a little bit further forward because they are heavier. We've trialled it, it works, but you know, it's time on the water and sail with someone else and figure out what those configurations are. We've spent countless hours on it, um, hence why Aussies were one, two, three at the most recent world championships. So basically on that note, let's give you some, oh, actually we've got measurements we do have measurements for these shrouds, for the stock standard, um, the ones that we used in the, um, at the Worlds, the adjust the correct length. Green right now, I'll let Joe figure that one out, but we'll have those lengths there for you guys to copy or get made up, um, for you guys at home. On that note, get out of the water. That's all it is, it's time on the water. Get out there, have some fun. I've been Paddy, Bridgie's been on the camera, we've been Totally Immersed TV. Thanks Joe for having us on Joyrider TV and we look forward to the next masterclass.